Hey everybody, it's Eric from Support Adventure. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what it's like being a digital nomad or entrepreneur working around the world in all different time zones. So let's go. So you're trying to decide what, what is the ideal place to work from. And say you're actually a remote entrepreneur or digital nomad and you're traveling around the world and you're trying to find that little uh, place where things are gonna be awesome for you and your work. And you know that involves a lot of stuff like climate, that involves a lot of stuff such as uh, you know cost of living, the sort of level of urbanism you're looking for, the level of kind of cultural interaction versus expat life that you're looking for. And it's all important stuff to think about, but the bane of our existence in a lot of cases as remote workers, if we have to interact with clients and people in different time zones is in fact time zones themselves. So it's a big world. So let's go and take a look at what it looks like. And I'll give you my experience as a digital nomad, founder, entrepreneur, and remote IT technician around the world. Um, I've worked in lots of different places from, uh, you know, from Colombia to South Africa and to Indonesia even. And I'll tell you what it's like working from all these different time zones so that you can factor in time zones as some sort of um, key part in your strategy for deciding how you're gonna work remotely. So I'm gonna start with where I'm sitting right now which is the Central European time zone. I'm currently in Belgrade, Serbia, which is the base that I set up. Now, being from Canada, when I first started um, working the Central European time zone, the six hour time difference was a bit of um, a disadvantage, but now I would say that it is definitely an advantage. And if you want a time zone, and in this time zone, I am also gonna include South Africa time because it's only, one hour or zero hours off, depending on daylight savings time. So basically, if you want a time zone that you can basically interact and work with the whole world, there's pretty much nothing better than the Central European or um, South Central and Africa time zone because, well, it literally is the center of the world. Look, over here, you've got Asia and Australia, and then over here, you've got all of the Americas. And in the middle, you've got this nice zone of Afro-Europe time zone magic, where you can just sit here and um, interact with everybody. When you wake up, it's when Australia is finishing their day. And in the middle of your afternoon, the Americas start working as well. So, this is where, when I'm in this time zone, I really feel, um, I really feel good, like commanding the world, commanding my business support adventure. And when I, when I'm in any other time zone, I feel like I'm missing something, because this time zone is so good for interacting with everybody. So, it's good for the general all-around stuff. And if most of your clients, I mean, I've got clients around the world, um, around the English-speaking world, and contractors around the. Uh, you know, rest of the world, mostly cheaper countries. So we can leverage the difference in cost of labor and stuff like that. But okay, so when I started the business here in Serbia, all of my clients were in London where I previously lived and met some people. So one hour time difference between Central European time and London is great. Ireland is also in that. And, uh, you know, different countries like Portugal are also in that sort of one hour behind most of Europe time zone. And countries, the next uh, time zone over is uh, Eastern European time, which is like Greece, Bulgaria, uh, Romania, Ukraine, Belarus, I think, depending on the time of year. And then you have all of the ones looking forward. So, you know, Turkey is, depending on daylight savings, sometimes it's one hour ahead of here, which sometimes it's two, I believe. And just all these countries here, you can catch them with relative ease, you know, based on the time difference when you set your day in Central Europe. Um, yeah, so looking ahead, yeah, basically lots of advantages. And if most of your clients in America, um, if you, most of your clients are in America, you have the benefit of actually getting a head start on the workday. So say you're like a digital nomad software developer. By the time your clients wake up, you will have done most of your workday and you'll have a good three hours to sync up with them, 
you know, between 9 a.m. and noon their time it is 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. here. And also you can catch, you know, um, 6 p.m. here is the start of U.S. Pacific time. So you can sync up with those people relatively easily as well. And Pacific time people tend to get, since they're um, behind most of the U.S., they tend to be um, starting work earlier at like 8 a.m. Pacific. So you might be able to get them on a call at 5 p.m. Central European time and sync up with them. If you are going to be heavily working with America with a full schedule, then you'll essentially be working um, in the evenings here. My personal um, schedule in Central European time and would be the same if I lived in South Africa, for example, or any part of Africa for that matter, is I work until about 8 p.m. in the evening. So I wake up with an, without an alarm clock every, every day. And you know, since I'm an entrepreneur, I don't have set hours. And sometimes I pull 12 hour days and stuff like that. That's just, uh, you know, an entrepreneur works uh, half days, 12 hours. That's uh, one saying that I picked up somewhere. So yeah, basically, you need to be cognizant of the fact that, well, you're going to be working into the evenings, if you need to keep on talking to with, with America, you're going to be getting emails from America, pretty much into your evening, into the time when you want to go to sleep, unless you're a night owl, um, because U.S. Eastern time ends at 11, um, U.S. Pacific time ends at 2 a.m. Central European time. But the head start is really great because I don't have to wake up with an alarm clock. I just wake up naturally when my body wants to wake up and it's awesome. Uh, and I wouldn't have that if I was living in U.S. Eastern time because so much happens at like 9am and all that stuff in these places. So even having one hour ahead of London starting 9am is 10am. That's even gives you a lot of breathing space. So yeah, this is my favorite time zone to work, work in. And uh, it's a shame that in Europe, uh, the weather is only uh, super nice half the year and can be quite miserable the other half of the year for winter. So South Africa is a good option, but it's not the safest country, but we've got lots of great people from there um, working for a supportive venture. So the next uh, group of time zones that I have uh, had experience working in that I'm gonna talk about is the Southeast Asian time zones. Right, so, um, and by the way, to figure out time zones, I recommend timeanddate.com as the best and their time zone converters. So you can put all the, time zones on the map. So you got Belgrade. That's where I'm now. You got London, New York, Los Angeles, and you have, uh, let's put Bangkok. And you can move them around. Da, 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 da. Let's put it in this sort of like the top is the earliest time zone. So as you see right now, it's a uh, Bangkok is six hours ahead of Belgrade, right? And seven hours ahead of London. That shifts uh, actually this weekend. So if I push this forward to next week, it's going to be 29th of March. And it's going to be, oh, look, now it's five hours ahead of Belgrade. And it's, uh, you know, six hours ahead of London. So keep in mind that these things do change. And in this case, like if we just go back, I think... Oh, no. Um, but yeah, basically what happens is you just have to constantly run the dates and see when the time changes are. The daylight savings time is the bane of my existence. Uh, when it changes, it's so much confusion. confusion. I hope they just abolish it. A lot of places are abolishing it, which creates a new problem of the difference between um, places that are abolishing it and places that are not abolishing it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people who believe in... Uh, you know, a global government, uh, this would be a really good place for a global government to stand, step in and just be like, okay, we're going to abolish this thing. It was stupid to, for, to begin with, caused lots of confusion for lots of years. Let's abolish it, everybody, right now. But unfortunately, different countries are choosing to do different things with this. I don't know why. Anyway, so Southeast Asia. So you're starting your day in Bangkok, basically. It's 8 a.m. in Bangkok. You still can sync up with uh, US Pacific time at the end of their day a little bit if they're willing to take a call at 6 p.m. And uh, you've got this calm period. It's the end of Pacific time when you wake up and it's the middle of the night in Europe. And so when I wake up in Southeast Asia, 
I feel calm. I feel like I can do whatever I need to do, creative work, really get in that creative vibe, really get into that um, working on the business, not in the business, you know, not getting on endless Zoom call after Zoom call after Zoom call after Zoom call forever, um, talking and burning yourself out, discussing things and repeating yourself a million times about stuff. So my solution is like when I'm in Southeast Asia a lot, I make videos that I can send to clients that go on our YouTube channel like this. I make videos, you know, it's uh, 11 a.m. Belgrade time right now. I'm sitting here making a video. This is nice. And um, since most of our clients is in America now, um, not getting many emails right now. So that's good. And yeah, basically it's, Right. It's, uh, it's just freedom for someone who's really trying to do a business or development work or some sort of uh, creative work and anything that requires you to focus and put your soul into it and create something rather than just blah, 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 blah. The Southeast Asia time zone is really good. And so you wake up the next morning with results from America you're there pretty much the whole day for uh, UK time. They start at like, uh, so when it's 9 a.m. In, in the UK, let's say most people are going to be there in winter. So we'll use uh, that sort of uh, time zone offset. Yeah, so 9 a.m. in UK, it's 4 p.m. in Thailand. So you've had a whole day of doing creative stuff and then you can pretty much ride the emails and Zoom calls because I find the creative work is what I want to do when I wake up in the morning, get focused and make stuff create stuff because that's where when my energy is most ready for that sort of thing and then you know zoom calls you can do them into the evening and just like talk and talk 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 elon musk is correct in saying that basically entrepreneurs spend too much time in meetings and too little time making their product or service as good as possible he recently said this and it's so true and when i'm in the South southeast asia time zone it really helps me plan write standard operating procedures, write structures, make web forms that collect information, um, record informational videos like this. It can all be done when you're not in the midst of business hours where people are constantly distracting, with, distracting you with emails, chats, and so on and so forth. So that's what the Southeast Asia time zone for. But if you are in the middle of the grind, if you need to do sales calls, if you need to do... Um, collaboration with teams over there if you're not ready to take a step back and look at the big picture it's probably not the time zone for you um indonesia if we look at for example in bali right it's even worse because well it's even later there it's one hour later than uh thailand so indochina time is what this is called indochina time and this is wita whatever that is what is it Central Indonesian time. Yeah. So this is actually Central Ind Indonesian time is my least favorite time zone for actually being able to talk, talk to people. Because by the time it's 9 a.m. in New York City, people are ready to get on calls. It's 9 p.m. in Bangkok and it's 10 p.m. in Indonesia. How's that going to work if you have to actually have to get on calls with America constantly, if you, unless you're a night owl, it's going to be really exhausting and really probably not the lifestyle that you want for yourself and really could mess up your Southeast Asian dreams uh, of working as a digital nomad and making enough money online and be able, being able to push the business forward. But I liked it. Every time I was there, just get on one call with America a day. Have management staff that you delegate tasks to or, yeah, you know, be the night shift. If you're a digital nomad, we have jobs for, you know, what I haven't actually factored into here is Australia. Yeah, but we have jobs for people who are working the night shift for America, for companies that need coverage for their um, help desk overnight. So, but uh, even, you know, I would say that even like... Um, this is kind of awkward if you're working from one of these time zones with Sydney, Australia. Western Australia is a little bit better. But um, yeah, Sydney, Australia, basically, when it's 9 a.m. in Sydney, it's uh, 5, 5 a.m. in Bangkok. And that's, that's not great. 6 a.m. in Indonesia. And even that's like a really awkward four hours time difference where you have to wake up at five in the morning to start at 9 a.m. in Australia. But you can still work with Australia. But Australia so far has been the least into remote working of all the English-speaking countries that I've encountered. So 
watch that. Um, so yeah, Asia is good if you want to be creative and you're completely away from the grind. And there might be companies that want to hire a digital nomad like you who's based in Asia to represent them going to places like Singapore, Hong Kong, um, Australia, working on those time zones. By going to, I mean, actually doing remote work for and representing them deals. And, and you know, it could be really good for that. But if you are looking for the best time zone for actual remote work and you're looking for a remote job, you need to look no further than uh, Latin America. You know, these places from Mexico, most of Mexico is on U.S. Central time. Um, where I was in Mexico was over here, which is on um, U.S. Eastern time. And most of it, most of the rest of these countries um, have time zones like in Central America. This is on between Central and Eastern all year round and really sunny countries. So basically what I'm saying, folks, is if you want to work re remotely with the North American economy and you want to actually have no barrier to time zone that you're working when other people are working, then I would recommend that you go to Latin America because like uh, Medellin, Medellin, Colombia, Medellin, depends on the pronunciation of Spanish that you use. It's perfectly aligned with Eastern time most of the year. And then, and then it can be aligned with um, central time, the other times of the year. So one hour behind Eastern, it's perfect for working with America. Um, if you wanted to be a little bit a touch closer to the London side of things, um, Brazil has an interesting uh, time zone where it's um, two hours ahead of Colombia most of the year. And um, yeah, so Brazil, and then you're only, um, from London, you're only four hours time difference instead of uh, six most of the year with Colombia. So if King staying in touch with the UK for a half day was important, choose Brazil. But basically, this will be the most plug and play. If you're a digital nomad in North, North America and you're looking for basically like uh, the plug and play, the plug and play sort of existence as a digital nomad and you're looking to save money get some interesting cultural experiences, go to a place with a lower cost of living and vibrant streets, then you should just fly down to Mexico. Mexico is the most plug and play, has the most uh, North Americans there already. And you can find a place like, I would recommend um, Playa del Carmen over here. Really nice place where you can just have a plug and play existence working with America. Um, so that's pretty much the whole thing, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Just to sum up, recommendations for Central European time and especially countries like Serbia and Poland and, you know, places like Croatia, if you want to see Montenegro, if you want to see and, um, you know, all sorts of just this whole Southeast European region. That's where I would recommend you go if you want an all around global presence where you can work with all the different cultures around the world, including London, New York um, and even a little bit of Asia. That's where you should go. Southeast Europe and Southeast Asia is where you should go if you want to disconnect and be creative and completely be out of the grind of Western civilization. The cultures are completely different there as well. In a lot of cases, you know, in Thailand, you're in a place that was never really colonized by Europeans. So you really get an authentic thing that's not associated with the grind of Western civilization and you're completely disconnected from the time zones of Western civilization, except for the Australians and uh, they're pretty laid back. Um, and then the greatest plug and play sort of uh, experience is if you go to Latin America, specifically um, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, or Mexico would be my, uh, my recommendations. Also Caribbean countries are, are in similar time zones and uh, yeah, that's about it. So if you're a digital nomad and um, you're also an IT technician and you're looking for IT support work, support adventure, we do that. We find people like you, contracts that they work can work that give you enough income to live in a place like Mexico, Thailand, Serbia, whatever you want. Get in touch with us. Uh, you can apply for an IT technician job. We even have sometimes uh, dispatch roles for people who are just getting into the industry who act as service coordinators who don't actually have to be super tech super technical in doing the job. So thanks a lot. My name is Eric. I'm the founder of Supported Venture, the expat outsourcing company. And um, 
I will continue to go all around the world with this business because the world is just so beautiful and uh, and it's so great to see the Western culture and continue to work with the Western culture, despite the fact that you can be out there experiencing the food, customs, weather, and um, all around vibes of uh, basically any culture now that you want through remote working. All you need is power and internet and off you go. So thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll catch you guys later.